Okay, welcome back. This is Christian. In this part of the video, I'm going to talk about the super function in inheritance. So this is what we did earlier. I'm going to modify this quote a little bit. I'm going to remove C's and we'll just keep A and B's. Okay, so B will inherit A. A is the parent class and B is the child class. So notice when we run this application, B runs and then B access A's show, right? Function. Um, um, it's, it's B, not A. Okay, because B doesn't have it, so it's going to go to A's functions and use that. Now, when we deal with uh, properties or um, instances or instance attributes of a class, that is very tricky in Python. So, for example, if I go to the A class, well, let's do the B, yeah, um, yeah, A class, and I have the constructor, and inside this constructor, I'm going to create just one attribute. We call it a uh, name. We'll give it just A. Okay, so if I save that, and go ahead and, and run it. And now B doesn't have a name, but since B inherits A, B should access a name. So here I'm going to go B dot underscore a name. And you see that it does print A, so it has access to A's attributes. All right, the same with the show, we just showed that earlier. So now this is the tricky part. When B had its own constructor, and I'll put nothing here, just put pass. Okay, so typically you would think that, you know, A is a parent class of B, B should have access to a name as well. So save this and run it now. And so I'm going to do again. So b dot underscore a name, and you, what just happened? Okay, you see that now a name is no longer an attribute, is no longer a property of b. And this happens when b ha it's, has its own constructor. Okay, so what that means is like we showed earlier. So for example, if I put this back to show again, I save that again run it one more time, and now if I pipe, type in b.show, okay, so it runs the b's function and not the a's function anymore. So this function is local to b and has the same name as a, so this will uh, overshadow a's function. The same is true for constructors. So when b has a constructor, if you explicitly put a constructor here in the b's class, Okay, what that does is this will overshadow A's constructor. So therefore, you are not instantiating A's properties at all. You can still access all these functions in the A uh, class, but you're not going to get all these properties because we never instantiated it. All right? And previously it works because we did not have this constructor. So what, what it does is if it doesn't have a constructor, if you do not explicitly put a constructor here, then B is going to call A's constructor and run it from here. And then that's why we're able to access it earlier. All right. Uh, to show that is true, let me do this. Let me comment this out. So as you can see, it's no longer com it's there. If I save it, run it again, just one more time. A dot underscore, my B dot underscore A name. So we have access to A. But how do we know it really does invoke this constructor? That's easy to do, right? So we say in here, we're going to print um, a message, a constructor. Okay? So let's save this and run it again. Now, when I instantiate B, because B doesn't have one, it's going to call the parents class constructor, invoke this constructor. So it will create a property, a name and it will run whatever code you put inside this constructor. So it's going to print this message to the console. Okay, so you can see here, 
it prints that message there. So it invokes it automatically. All right? But when you have it your own like this, if I run it again, and let me clear my console, you will see that's no longer the case. As you can see, nothing gets printed because we, we, we stopped here. And just to make sure that's true, we could put this here as well. We we'll say B constructor. Okay, so if I save that again, run it, and you see it only runs B constructor, it stops there. So what does that mean? That means because we never invoked this constructor, we would never created this property, so therefore B does not have access to the property. It has access to the functions, but not the property. That's why if I do B underscore A name, it's not there. Okay. The only time you can use it, or have it, is you can set it. Because Python is a dynamically typed language, you can set properties anytime you want. It doesn't matter if it's in there initially or not. And that's the, I guess, beauty of the, you know, dynamically typed languages. Same is true for PHP and, and JavaScript. So I can say, okay, well, I can say B underscore A name is now set to B. So now if I type B dot A name, you get B. All right. So now this A name is part of B. And the tricky part is, let's just say I'm going to go to the parent class up here and write a function to get name. And the name is going to return the self A name up there. So if I type self dot underscore A name, it return this return. Uh, return that. All right. So run it again. So here we go. B does not have a name. Doesn't have it. If you try to run the function B dot get name, it's going to be the same thing. Is there's no property called a name? Now if I do like I did earlier, B dot underscore a name is going to be now B that a name exists if I can just prove that and there it is and if I call this function get name to get this self a name b dot get name and there it is right so you see that it is attached to this attribute here okay that's why I'm able to get the name function and use that right so even though this a name was not initially invoked, but since I set it here, and then it opens that or makes a connection to this variable, that's why when I use a's function to return self, it's completely illegal here. So very tricky here. So be careful when you want to use some of these. If you want to initialize these at first, you have to invoke this function. And to do that, when you invoke your the internal constructor, you have to also invoke that as well. So right before you do anything else, the first thing you want to do is you call by using this function called super function. This super means it's going to go to this parent class and call these functions. Right, the one you want to call is this init function to instantiate A's properties. So we say super dot underscore underscore init underscore underscore you invoke that so now if I save it and let me clear my console over here if I run it now all right so you can see that it runs a constructor because we call that first and then now once that's done a dot I mean dot a underscore name is now created and then we call our own con our function here a message here so we got two of them right printed so now b has the a dot name a a name as you can see is now a and so you don't have to you know set it and and so on okay so it's important to do this manually 
Now, Java does this automatically. You don't have to do this. So this always happens in Java. When you invoke it, Java will always go to the parent class and invoke that constructor automatically for you. And um, that may be good, that may be bad, I don't know, I guess. But Python doesn't do that automatically for you. You have to do that manually yourself. So in a way, it does give you this uh, authority, or if you will, to control what should be instantiated, what should not be instantiated. Okay, and again, the funny thing is that because it's a dynamic type language, you can set and remove properties at any time you want. So I can do another function here, and even in the A class, say get a score, and um, say return self score, even though it's not in there, right? Save that and run it. If I type like a dot or b dot get score, it's not going to be there because I haven't created a score yet. Okay. If I now say b dot score underscore score is 100, now I can have, I can use the function. So b dot get score, it returns 100. There you go. So now score is part of property of b and because the self here refers to whichever self is being used, the self is the B property object. So even though the functions up here in the A class, this is really now a part of a, the B uh, object. And I can use the function here in the A class or in the B class or another class if I, I extend that as well to invoke and to call this function and do whatever I need to do based on this new property. So very tricky. Um, very, I guess, powerful in a way as well. And you can remove uh, these properties also, like the score here. If I don't want to use it again, uh, by setting to no, it's not going to destroy it. If I say score is equal to none, that it just means none is not there. I can still access it, and as you can see, it's nothing there, but it's still, access, it's still there. Uh, so to really remove it, you have to do something like um, you can do it in, in a couple of ways, actually two ways. One is called the del object, and then uh, del, and then b dot underscore score, right? So now you remove that attribute, and so that score is no longer there. If I try to do it, b get score, it will say that score is no longer. Um, well, it should it actually it should remove that. I'm not sure why it didn't remove it. Let's see, b dot underscore. Yeah, you see that it's no longer an attribute there, okay? And uh, that's one way. Another way is, let's just say, b underscore back to 10. If you want to remove that, you can also call the delete function. And that takes the uh, two parameters, I think. One is the object, which is b, and then the attribute in the string. So that's the underscore like that, I think. Um, I guess it didn't like it here in the console, but I think you should be able to do that. Oh, it's not delete. I'm sorry, it's um, del attribute like that. It's the wrong one. B dot underscore score, and so now that's going to be moved. I try to call B dot underscore, then it's no longer there. Okay, so you can do use that to delete those um, attributes. If you want to delete the entire object, like B, you can do the same thing. D, E, L, and then just B, and then that's been removed. If you access B, B is no longer defined. Okay, so that's just a few things I want to talk about, but basically it's a super function here. Make sure you use that in here. If you want to call the B function, I mean A's function as well from within another function here, you can do the same thing. You can print, um, a's function first and the b's or b's function first function for the a doesn't matter here so you can put like super and then here call the uh, show up there function this is a's function okay so if you see i'm going to call b's first and then call call a's if i save it run again if i do a b dot show i just see both statements b's first followed by a's okay if you want to call the parents uh, function as well. So again, that is nice in a way that you can use both functions to do a lot of things because again, you're extending A's function, whatever it was, you can add your own.
right? Maybe this just prints something and then you want to add more to it so you have your own way of manipulating or implementing the instrumentation here. You can extend that function to do more. So again, back to that polymorphism. So I hope this kind of clears up the uh, with the super here. So make sure that if you if you create your own constructor in the child class, and if you want to access the properties in the parent class, you must call the super init. If you don't do that, you cannot access those data right away until you set those data. Okay.